to be forgotten. A fate worse than death. G'day Ziggy D here, and today, let's take a look at Path of Exile's upcoming 3.6 expansion, Synthesis. I'll also discuss some of the new skills, long-awaited balance changes for hand-casting spells, and of course, the all-important new loot. Save these memories, preserve them, but move swiftly, lest you be forgotten. Synthesis, the combination of components to create something new. This new expansion's name applies to its story, its gameplay, and its rewards. Kavas is a spirit who has lost most of the memories of his former life, but he was clearly someone of great importance to Rayclast history. By recovering Kavas's crumbling memories and piecing them together, we'll be able to uncover the story of who he once was. We'll begin this journey by stabilizing memories we locate while exploring through the story and endgame. These shorter encounters have us enter a memory zone filled with monsters, including new synthesis enemies. The edges of these memories are rapidly crumbling away, and to stray into these voids of unremembrance is to be quickly forgotten yourself. In order to stabilize and secure the memory, we must battle our way towards multiple stabilization points. Once we've stabilized the memory, we'll obtain these memory fragments for later use. Loot from the memory fragment zones will drop at the end, so you don't need to stress about picking up items while the memory crumbles around you. After helping Kavas recover some of his memories, he'll take us to the Memory Nexus, an area floating within the voids of his mind. From here, we'll be able to use the memories we have secured to create connections to the drifting memories within this void. Some of these may contain extra rewards or even battles with forgotten bosses. Interviewing Chris Wilson, co-founder and lead producer at Grinding Gear Games, he said that inspiration came from both Delve League's exploration map, but also from board games, which can be seen clearly in the memory map's rather adorable aesthetics. When designing Synthesis, Chris and Jonathan sat around a table fiddling with pieces from the board game Carcassonne, seeing how they fit together to create different paths. I wanted to share this little bit of backstory because I found it a really cosy thought. Mechanically speaking, within the memory map, we'll try to use the memory fragments we have collected, like board game pieces, to create roads to the different floating reward memories scattered around the Nexus. These reward and boss battle memories will appear over time, and will decay as soon as they are run, such is the fickle nature of the mind. It's pretty clear visually, but you can only connect multiple memories if they have paths that would connect to each other, so you'll need to collect the right memories and place them to make a path. Each of these memory fragments that you place creates an area, and these areas connect together to form a zone that you can run through. Utilizing the developments made in the design of Delve, you can even run a path spanning multiple memories without load screens in between them. Unless the path of course becomes too long, in which case you may have a load on one of the bridges. While the reward memories are the main goal that you are trying to work towards, the paths themselves can be quite rewarding as well. Each memory fragment has its own map style modifiers that increase the challenges and rewards of the zone. The real kicker here is that zones will combine the bonuses of their mods together into a global bonus across all memories. So the more you place and the longer the paths you create, the more rewarding and challenging your memory nexus runs will be. Chris Wilson said that it'll be exciting to see the long memory chains some players will create to challenge themselves. To spice things up further, there are also memory amplifier nodes, which can do a variety of things, including doubling the effect of the mods of any memories placed there. Memories have a set number of runs before they decay, as indicated by the number below the piece, so the hunt for new memories in the regular game will continue as you try to forge new paths to reach reward memories. In addition to the regular loot and specific bounties from reward memories, Synthesis brings two new item types for players to hunt and craft with. The first is the Erratic Fractured Items. These are rares that Kavas only partially remembers, and they drop within memories from the Synthesis monsters you will face. They are effectively broken items, as some of the modifiers on them are locked and cannot be changed. A lot of the time this will result in an item that isn't very useful, with bad or weak modifiers locked into place, though there will be another use for these weaker fractured items that I'll discuss shortly. Occasionally, however, a fractured item may drop with locked modifiers that are actually really good. In this case, you have an extremely valuable piece that you can craft into something amazing. 
Think of a good weapon with a high physical damage roll locked into place. You can alchemy, chaos, and even use fossils or essences, and these fractured mods will remain in place. I personally really love how this will combine with the existing layers of crafting options in the game, which has just been getting more and more interesting and deep over time. So what about those junky, broken, and useless fractured items that you find? Enter Synthesis. Taking three fractured items and synthesizing them will allow you to create a brand new item. These synthesized items have powerful new implicit modifiers, even on items that do not currently have implicit modifiers. Implicits for those unfamiliar are modifiers built into an item that remain in place when you craft them into rares. Think of the cold resistance implicitly built into a sapphire ring. These new synthesis implicits will allow you to create items more powerful or more build defining than in the past. It could be extra life and resistance built into a chest armor, elemental conversion on gloves, or even a new way of generating endurance charges. The synthesis process itself is rather a mystery, one that Chris Wilson says GGG is keen to see players discover for themselves during the league. What I know is that the combination of the three fractured items will affect the outcome in multiple ways, and that it seems even the extra crafted modifiers on fractured items may indeed play a role. As an extra note, there is plans to make Labyrinth Enchantments a separate modifier slot, so they won't occupy the implicit slot. This means we'll be able to have both an implicit and an enchantment on a helmet, for example. So to recap, in simple, Synthesis as a league will see us recover memory fragments in the short side areas during the regular Path of Exile game. Then we'll take these fragments to the memory map and build roads with them to create longer runs to specific rewards. During all of this, we'll obtain a mixture of regular game rewards like loot and currency, as well as fractured items, which can be crafted if good, or synthesized into new items if bad. And throughout all of this, we'll progress the storyline of Kavas, the Hollow One, as he recovers his memories. Changing gears a little. A hot topic in the realm of Path of Exile Balance has been self-casting spells, or as GGG is referring to it now, hand-casting. Over time, the iconic image of a mage slinging a spell created from their hands has been lost somewhat in the face of more and more improvements to alternative methods of casting spells to destroy enemies. Chris Wilson identifies two main issues that they are addressing in the Synthesis expansion. The first is that, to put it bluntly, many spells are too weak for players to want to use, while several stand out as primary choices. GGG's goal here is ambitious, but they plan to effect a game-wide rebalance of spells to get them approximately similar in power levels as each other whilst taking into account the differences in things like damage timing and areas of effect that make spells different from each other. The second point is that players have lately been using every means possible to avoid casting spells themselves. Traps, mines, totems, and even triggered effects. Chris Wilson says that the goal is not to punish these methods, but rather to make hand casting spells more tempting, so that players will consider the extra risks of slinging spells themselves as potentially worthwhile. In addition to balance changes, there will be two new support gems targeted exclusively at hand casting spells. These will be revealed at a later time, but GGG is calling them quote unquote crazy. So with the emphasis this expansion being on spell casting, six new primary damage dealing spells are being introduced across two archetypes, Chaos and Holy. In talking with Chris, Chaos spells were previously aimed at being rather rare and niche. However, their popularity within the player base has grown quite a lot, and GGG is interested in expanding the archetype of the Chaos Spellcaster out further. The first skill reveal then is Soul Rend. This skill fires a slow moving projectile that causes chaos damage over time to enemies near it. It has a slight built in homing effect that'll cause it to swing closer to nearby enemies, which gives it a chaotic, writhing look as it flies across the battlefield. Soul Rend can be slowed down to increase single target damage, or given multiple projectiles to increase its pack clearing potential. It's pitched at being a solid introductory skill to the Chaos archetype with a simpler and more relaxed playstyle than other Chaos skills. The second archetype is a Holy Spellcaster, a new niche within Path of Exile. It's characterized by spells that deal physical damage converted in full or in part to fire or lightning damage. Because of the nature of physical conversion, these spells will be able to leverage things that scale off of physical damage, 
such as added fire damage support or the hatred aura. The first skill revealed then is for Divine Ire. Divine Ire is a channeling skill that deals damage to nearby enemies with tendrils of lightning while it's charging. When released, it deals a large blast of damage in the direction faced. Divine Ire charges off of enemies while dealing damage to them, and the more it's charged up, the more damage it'll deal with its final blast. This is a more advanced skill as correct positioning and familiarity with its damage pattern will reward skillful players with more damage and efficiency. You'll want to kill a pack while charging off of them, and then unleash the blast on the surviving rare monster quickly and cleanly to optimize its use. Now in Synthesis we'll also be seeing 16 new uniques added to the game. Grinding Gear Games is changing gears a bit on unique design. In the past they've filled out the roster with plenty of leveling or in my own words somewhat filler uniques. With over 850 uniques in total now, focus is shifting to fewer, more interesting and more impactful uniques. Chris says that it's important for Uniques moving forward to provide more opportunities to open up the metagame, change the gameplay, and provide more playstyles for players to aspire to. The first example from Synthesis of this new design approach in action is the new Shaper drop, the Eternity Shroud. In addition to some build around modifiers that heavily reward decking your character out in endgame shaped items, this has a new skill tied to it, Glimpse of Eternity. When you are hit, this skill creates a bubble of time dilation at your character's location, slowing the action speed of enemies within it. This will make it much safer to be in melee range with enemies inside of the bubble, or it may allow you some safety to retreat if you are playing at range. As Synthesis also signifies the end of Betrayal League, what's happening to Betrayal's content? Betrayal's expansion was designed to bring together Bestiary, Delve, Incursion and Zana all in the new master system. All of these changes remain in effect moving forwards, and Betrayal will be added into the core game as part of this master system as well. Junor Tui becomes one of the masters, and Betrayal encounters have been rebalanced and added as regular encounters from Act 9 onwards. Syndicate encounters will occur less often, but in a zone with Syndicate activity, you will have multiple Syndicate encounters spread out across the zone. As such, you may find a map with a fort, a transport, and a research zone all in one. Chris noted that care is being taken to ensure that you won't have an intervention occur while you're fighting a fort, as, well, that'd just be unfair. Chris also mentioned that this will not dilute the existing rate of master encounters. So in my chat earlier with him, Chris also mentioned that content for 2019 will follow a similar path to 2018, with four planned expansions on 13 week cycles. And at the end of the year, the schedule will culminate in the first ExileCon, and the announcement of the 4.0 Mega Expansion for next year. I had a lot of fun both playing and making content for the Betrayal League, it's one of my favourites so far, and I'm really excited to explore the opportunities Synthesis is looking to offer, in particular the custom extreme memory chains that could be made, and how the new craftable items will slot into the existing crafting meta. I'll be following up with more of my thoughts and hopefully some extra teaser content in the weeks to come, so make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. That's it for now, I'm Ziggy D, and thanks for watching.